May 19th, High Court of Karine, Accused Lobby. Talk about some really close shaves. Well, you can't get a closer shave than Headsman's brand blades, that's for sure. The trial's not even over yet, and I'm already exhausted. Still, you were able to fight back the Queen herself in there. Well, maybe with Miss Faye's help, I won't have to keep on playing her game much longer. Speaking of which... I guess it's a little late to be asking, but... Do you think she's well enough to testify, Mr. Wright? She slept all day yesterday out of exhaustion, apparently. But that's all it was, so she should be okay. Barbed head. Horned head. Oh, hello, your benevolence. Princess Rafa. You were really impressive in there. I am the royal priestess, Rafa Padma Kurain. And I am prepared to face my father's death. Despite your mother's opposition, you stood your ground. And in doing so, you fulfilled your duty as the royal priestess. It was... It was all thanks to you and your friends. Your belief in me gave me the courage to follow my path. So, um, I... You have my gratitude. Oh, uh, don't mention it. I know. I shall thank you with a gift. What would you like? A cow? A horse? Or perhaps I shall reward your efforts with a royal shoulder massage. Oh, uh, that's okay, your benevolence. Your gratitude is more than enough. Thanks. But I thought you Americans liked massages. My technique was highly praised by my father, I'll have you know. Hey you! Lawyers! Where's the accused? Huh? Dirk? That's a good question. I blew it big time, AJ. That's... Shut up, you! Um, what's going on? This scoundrel tried to escape with the accused. What? We were able to nab him, but the accused is nowhere to be found. Where are you hiding him, you miscreant? I keep telling you, I got no idea where he went. I mean, yeah, we booked it together, but I lost track of him after that. So Dirk's on the lam now? Probably, but who knows? He vanished in the blink of an eye. Vanished? You want to know something, AJ? Dirk said to me, I can't put Amara in danger. I have to set her free before it's too late. What? Don't tell me he's gone to rescue her. But that's what I am telling you. That's why I helped him escape in the first place. Gats, do you realize what you've done? Well, what's done is done. Still, why did he choose to go rescue her now? Maybe he didn't want to die with any regrets or something. You know, just in case he ended up on the chopping block. Why, Dirk? I thought you believed in me. Aw, uh, don't be like that, AJ. He'll be back as soon as he frees Amara, you'll see. That's not the point, Dax. Listen, lawyer. You let us know immediately if the accused contacts you. The trial will now resume. See that you're ready. Wait, the trial's still on? Even without the defendant? Those were her eminence's orders, so you will return to the courtroom at once. Let's go, Apollo. All we can do is see where the next testimony leads. May 19th, High Court of Karine. Now then, let us resume the trial at hand. Um, Your Majesty, my client seems to have gone missing. Mm, what do you think, Your Eminence? Should we proceed without the accused? Why not? My Royal Guard is searching for him as we speak. They shall find him soon enough, for they would not dare to keep me waiting. Yes, but what about the law governing court proceedings? Then I shall simply revise it. She is like Morgan Fay on steroids. As ruling sovereign of Karim, I proclaim the following. Should the accused be an enemy of the crown, they may be tried in absentia. Well, in that case, I guess there's no problem with proceeding. 
Will the witness, Miss Maya Fay, please approach the stand? Maya! Sorry to summon you like this, Maya. <sighs> Getting dragged out of bed into court is not exactly a fun wake-up call, Nick. I'm sorry, Miss Fay. It was my idea. And you are... Oh, right. I'm Apollo Justice. It's nice to finally meet you. Oh, so you're Apollo. Nick's told me all about you. You're the new guy with the loud voice and a bit of an unreliable streak, right? Uh, unreliable! Um, well, that was two years ago. You've come a long way since. So why was I called here anyway? Um, am I under arrest again? Huh? I guess no one's filled her in. Well, she has been asleep this entire time. Miss Faye, this is a trial for Dirk Sadmati, and you're here as a witness. What? D Dirk's been arrested? But... That's not exactly the reaction I was expecting. Miss Faye, you are suspected of playing a part in the murder of Justice Minister Inga. What? Someone allegedly forced you to channel the minister to obfuscate the time of his murder. At least that is what the defense claims. Wait, what? How could you, Apollo? How did you even reach that conclusion? Sorry, but it's the only way this whole case makes any sense. Your understandable anger at the defense aside, will you testify, Miss Faye? Yes, Your Majesty. Witness testimony. Channeling the minister. Um, I don't have any idea what's going on, but... I know I didn't channel Minister Inga. I didn't even have the chance to do something like that. Besides, I never go quietly along with some criminal's plan. Though I guess there are some things I'd go quietly along with. Hmm, it seems the witness doesn't believe she has ever channeled Justice Minister Inga. And if her words prove to be true defense, your entire argument becomes moot. You do understand that, don't you? Yes, of course. Hmm. It doesn't seem like Miss Faye is lying. Apollo, Maya was being awfully secretive about something just now. Then I guess I better dig a bit and try to get her to open up to me first. Time to see how this examination is gonna play out. Um, I don't have any idea what's going on, but... You've been asleep ever since you were rescued from the tomb, correct? Mm-hmm. I was exhausted after being held captive for so long. That must have been terrible. Maya, Minister Inga didn't do anything to you, did he? Oh no, it wasn't like that. On the contrary, I asked him for all sorts of things. Like what? Like, I'm really craving burgers and I'll die if I miss an episode of the Plume Punisher. Acting like a brat netted me a TV and even a few burgers from someplace. He was surprisingly nice to me. Huh? Um, are you sure we're talking about the same guy here? <laughs> he may have loomed large, but he was unexpectedly easy to push around. Even though he's the one who was responsible for pushing those execution papers through. Oh, that? Approving executions was simply his preferred method of stress relief. With a wife like her, he was probably really pushing them through out of fear. I'm beginning to see why he wanted to stage a coup. In any case, my time in captivity wasn't so bad. But of all the things that happened... I know I didn't channel Minister Inga. Are you sure about that? Maybe you just don't remember channeling him? Don't remember? I may be 28, but I'm not senile, you know. Something's not right here. Miss Faye, you were confined to Amara's tomb the whole time. Is that correct? Um, yes. But I wasn't conscious the whole time. Okay, then let me ask you something. Did you ever see Nana in the tomb? Dressed as Dirk? Huh? Is this some kind of joke? I think I'd remember if I saw something as crazy as that. Plus, I doubt anyone would carry out a crime like that right in front of a potential witness. I hate when he's right. 
I didn't even have the chance to do something like that. Hold it. You didn't have a chance to channel him? Does channeling someone take a long time? Not really. Once you get the hang of it, it's pretty much instantaneous. But I was all tied up, literally. So there was no way for me to make the channeling mudra with my hands to do it. Right. I guess she really didn't channel Inga then. Maya, when mediums are done with a session, they can send the spirit back to the other world themselves, right? Sure, unless they're still in training. Amateurs can get possessed by spirits sometimes. But full-fledged mediums can stay in total control of a session. And they can send the deceased spirit away anytime they want. So I take it you can do that too, Miss Faye? Of course! It's a cinch for the new and improved Mystic Maya Faye, a spirit medium. That's strange. You seem like the same old childish Maya to me. Gah! I'll show you childish Nick! Besides, I'd never go quietly along with some criminal's plan. So you wouldn't channel spirits for unseemly purposes? Of course not. Spirit channeling is my bread and butter. And I take a lot of pride in my work. It's like, would you use your legal skills to commit a crime, Apollo? Well, uh, until finger pointing and objecting become deadly, I don't see how they can be used. Wow, you're a regular Mr. Smarty Pants, just like Nick. Always at the ready with some sarcastic comeback. I think I'll save my many objections for after the trial. Yes, please. Anyway, I'd never go along with something like murder. Though I guess there are some things I'd go quietly along with. Sounds to me like you're trying to hide something, Miss Faye. Didn't anyone teach you about respecting boundaries, Apollo? It's really rude to pride in a person's private affairs. Uh, sorry, I didn't realize, um... Wait, we're in a court of law. Yeah, I know. Then what was all that about me being rude? I'm just doing my job. So please, just tell me, what exactly are you hiding? Sorry, but I promised Dirk I wouldn't say. You made a promise to Dirk? Mm-hmm. A pretty big one. I think this is about all you're going to get out of her. Yeah. Enough. The witness is denying that she channeled any spirits. Further questioning is pointless. It appears your little fiction has been soundly exposed for what it is. You should listen to her, Apollo. I don't even know why you suspected me in the first place. I mean, you don't have any evidence of me channeling Minister Inga, do you? Oh, um, evidence, huh? There's no point in even thinking about it, really. I don't use anything special to channel spirits, so there wouldn't be anything left behind. That's true. Just like when she channeled the High Priest, all Maya needs is her own body. If the defense has no evidence to offer, I will have to end this cross-examination. What now? Even if she doesn't use any special items to do the channeling itself, you'd think there would be something to complete the deception. Is there any proof that Justice Minister Inga was channeled? Yes! You bet there is. You bet there is. Really? Well, now. You're bluffing, I take it. I'll be fine. If we're right, then there must be some sort of proof to back us up. Time to do some serious thinking, Apollo Justice. Okay, we know that when Rafa saw her father, he wasn't dressed like Miss Faye, right? Right, because if he was, Rafa would have immediately known he was being channeled. So that means... He was dressed in his usual suit when Rafa saw him. Aha! Good thinking, Apollo. This might be the perfect angle to, angle to attack from. Alright, let's have an answer for, from the defense. What proof do you have that Miss Maya Fey channeled Justice Minister Inga, the gemstone? Is that a gemstone? We found this among the ashes of one of the tomb's incense burners. Does this gemstone ring any bells, your eminence? What? What was that doing in the tomb? 
Ah, so you do recognize it. But then as his wife, how could you not recognize this gemstone button from your husband's jacket? Hmm, I don't get where you're going with this. Channeling Minister Inga alone wouldn't be enough to fool someone like Princess Rafa. Especially if he were wearing your clothes. So you would have had to change into the minister's clothes before channeling him. Ah! Miss Fay, you used the minister's clothes as cover while going from his room to the tomb. Where you burned them once you no longer needed them. What? Uh-oh. She seems genuinely surprised by that, Apollo. Objection! Ah, come on. Miss Fay? Yes? Do you know my husband's name? It was, um, Inga Karkul Kurai, right? That is correct, in part, but there's more. Much more. Inga Karkul Harkul Disnam Bian Laga Oro. What the hell is this? Inga Karku Harkon Disnam Biani Laga Omo Pompastan It Aridzi Kurain the Third. What the hell kind of name is this? That is his true name. Could it be any longer? Due to its length, only a portion of it was ever made public. So Miss Faye, do you know did you know his true name? No, I mean how could I? Precisely. Yet a medium must know both the face and true name of the one she, she seeks to channel. Ah! Uh, yeah! So then, Miss Faye couldn't have channeled Minister Inga? That's what I've been saying this whole time. Why would I want to randomly channel some old guy I didn't know? And didn't like, thanks to that last trial. I... I can't believe this. Apollo, I really don't think Maya's lying. However, your line of reasoning still seems credible to me. I agree, but there's something tripping us up in, in the details. Maybe we're working off of some wrong assumption again. Um, Apollo, I was thinking... Yes? Since I didn't channel Minister Inga, is it possible that someone else did? Someone else? But who else could it have been? I haven't thought that far yet. Such chatter is without merit. Let us move on, shall we? Ugh. I don't care what Garan says. I'm gonna figure this out. If it wasn't Miss Faye and the Queen has an alibi, then... Apollo, forget about who is capable of channeling spirits for a second. I should consider the circumstances around the channeling, right? Right. We know Rafa saw her father come running out of his private quarters. If he was being channeled at the time, who could it have been? It had to have been someone who was in Inga's private quarters. Well, I'm waiting, Defense, and you know how much I despise waiting. Yes, but there is someone else besides Miss Faye who could have channeled Minister Inga. There is just one more person, and they were in Inga's private quarters. That person is our only hope now. So the Defense believes there was another. Let's have your very serious answer, then. Triple penalty. With pleasure. Horn's death. Who could have channeled Minister Inga? There's only one person who could have. Nana! Take that! Nana? Your eminence said it yourself. That's right. Nana never did go into the tomb that day. Instead, she entered my husband's private quarters. How did you know? It's quite simple. Shoe prints were discovered in Inga's private quarters. Shoe prints that belong to Nana. And then there's her benevolence's statement. She said that Nana disappeared right after she entered Minister Inga's private quarters. The room from which Minister Inga himself came running out of not long afterwards. You are not seriously suggesting. I am. It's the only thing that makes sense. Nana channeled Minister Inga and left his private quarters thereafter. That's why no one has seen her since. And why only the minister's shoe prints were found outside his residence. Ah! No way! That's gotta be it. Nana must have somehow channeled the minister.
All of the circumstantial evidence has fallen into place. You can't ignore it anymore. You can't claim Nana isn't connected to this case somehow. In light of this, the defense calls Nana to the stand. Well, your eminence? Very well then, let us call Nana to testify. Yes! Now we can finally crack this case wide open. Let us adjourn while the witness is summoned. There is no need. Nana is in the waiting lobby. What? Nana's here? I thought she'd gone missing. It seems she was feeling unwell and simply wished to rest undisturbed. But her concern for Rafa brought her here today. She took time off without Rafa's knowledge or consent? I'm betting there's more to her disappearing act than meets the eye, Apollo. Miss Nana, do you understand why you have been summoned here today? Yes, of course. Her Eminence has informed me that this man here suspects I have committed a crime. So this is Nana. That's quite the heir to. Though I will say... <laughs> I suppose I'm not as old as I have thought. If this horn-headed nincompoop would take me for a criminal. Nincompoop? Isn't that Rafa's favorite insult? I guess Nana rubbed off on her with all the time they spend together. You there, young Hornhead! Yes? You're accusing me of slaying Minister Inga and channeling his spirit, yes? What an active imagination you have! Young folk are so wonderfully open-minded! <laughs> Thanks. Just take the compliment, Justice. Now then, will the witness please proceed with her testimony? This court wishes to know if you did or did not channel Minister Inga in his private quarters. Witness testimony! I'm no spirit medium, Sonny. I was feeling under the weather yesterday and decided to rest these weary bones. Besides which, a lowly servant such as I could not possibly be an honorable spirit medium. Only members of the royal family can learn the art of spirit channeling here in crime. After Queen Amara's passing, her eminence Queen Yaran is the only spirit medium left. If you believe a medium to be the culprit, it would have to be that young lass, Maya Faye. And there you have it. It seems we have summoned her for nothing. Only those of the royal bloodline have the power of spirit channeling. That a servant such as Nana could channel spirits is a most unamusing jest. On the surface, anyway. But our line of reasoning has led us to this end. That Nana channeled Inga's spirit. Alright, the defense may now question the witness. Alright. This won't take us long. I was feeling under the weather yesterday and decided to rest these weary bones. Besides which, a lowly servant such as I could not possibly be an honorable spirit medium. Only members of the royal family can learn the art of spirit channeling here in crime. After Queen Amara's passing, her eminence, Queen Duran, is the only spirit medium left. Really? Why do I feel like you're being so full of it? Okay, so I presented what makes sense in terms of a direct contradiction. Except, I don't know how to make it make sense in the larger context of things. Well, is the defense going to follow up its loud objection with a sound explanation? Oh, um, sorry. How do I put this? I believe there's a problem with Nana's testimony. Go on. She asserted that she could not possibly be a spirit medium because, in Kurine, only members of the royal family can learn how to channel spirits. I fail to see the problem in that statement defense. Hold on. I'm getting to it, your majesty. 
Nana stated an absolute falsehood. Since we know that Amara is still alive. At the same time, circumstantial evidence points to Nana channeling Inga. After all, just after she entered his private quarters, Inga came running out screaming despite having been killed at 2 p.m. That would mean that Nana channeled Inga. Even though supposedly only those of the royal family are capable of doing so. Wait, wait, wait. Is it too late to ask for a refund on my trip down the rabbit hole? Sadly, no. Mr. Wright, you may think I've lost my mind with this bluff, but... But... But if I can at least establish the possibility, I think it'll give us the break we need. Wait a sec. Are you going to propose what I think you are? Yes. It's a huge risk, but I think there's a chance I can prove it. Will the court please take a look at this photo? Hmm. That's... This photo's very existence, to say nothing of the person in it, contradicts the witness's claim that Queen Garan is the only remaining spirit medium in Karai. Horned devil! You mustn't! Oh, but I must. Under these circumstances, the outcome of this trial depends on it. But you already knew that, didn't you, your eminence? Will the defense please explain who is shown in the photograph? The person in the photo is the previous queen, Amara Sigatar Kurai. Contrary to popular belief, she was never, never assassinated. In fact, she's very much alive. What? But that's nonsense! Take a good look at the law book in this photo, your majesty. The mark of the dragon Brandon on it could only have been placed there after Queen Amara's supposed assassination. <laughs> Queen Amara's still alive? Has the lawyer gone mad? Well, I personally find it odd to believe. I will now allow the defense to continue. You may proceed, defense. Queen Amara's death was staged to keep her safe from her would-be killer. Yet according to Dirk, she is actually being held captive somewhere. But the real truth is that Queen Amara is not being held in confinement. Rather, she walks freely among us. Here in this very courtroom today. But how? Not again. Do not be deceived, your majesty. The red pepper is skilled in weaving plausible lies. It is the cunning lawyerly art known as bluffing. But knowing this, there is no need to fear his forked tongue. Objection! That's where you're wrong, prosecutor, because you'll be quaking in your boots soon enough. Is that so? It's my turn, Yeyuta, to wake you up to the truth right before your very eyes. Queen Amara is still very much alive and has been disguising herself as Nana. Take that! But, but that's. <laughs> this is the simplest and cleanest explanation for everything we've covered so far. Is that a Kingdom Hearts reference? The person who killed Minister Inga. Someone with intimate knowledge of the divination seance. The medium who channeled the minister in order to mask the real time of his death. Condense these traits into one person and you get a spirit medium of royal blood. And that person 
is none other than you, Nana. Your true identity is the former Queen Amara and the killer we've been looking for all along. What? Objection. Have you finally lost your mind, Mr. Justice? What you say is beyond blasphemous, even in the depths of hell. Oh my, such frightening allegations. Indeed, and absolutely ludicrous to boot. Her eminence Queen Amara yet lives. And is actually Miss Nana here? You've truly gone off the deep end. You don't have to take my word for it. In fact, a certain someone can help me prove it. Your eminence? If Queen Amara truly is dead, you should be able to channel her spirit right here, right now. Isn't that correct? I can deny it no longer. The lawyer speaks the truth. Nana, the woman who stands here before us, is Amara, the former queen believed to have perished 23 years ago. Finally, we finally got Inga's real killer on the stand. Nana, no, Amara Sigatar Karai. Please drop the act and tell us what really happened. Oh, dearie me. I guess I shouldn't have underestimated the power of youth. Well done, young Hornhead. Unreal. Whoa! <sighs> I was getting tired of masquerading as an old woman anyway. It has been far too long since I last greeted you, good people of Karain. It is I, Amara Sigatar Karain, your former queen. Qu queen Amara? What? And I thought Garand's makeover was extreme. Can it really be true? You are alive and well? It is true. I feel as if I have been called back from the Twilight Realm. I fear I have caused all of you a great deal of distress. <laughs> Amara, I'm sorry I was unable to keep your secret any longer. I hope you can forgive me. It is quite all right, Garand. I am safe now. For Dirk, that blackguard who threatened my life will be recaptured soon enough. I need not conceal my identity any longer. Queen Amara, what, what does this all mean? Were you not killed in that fire 23 years ago? I barely escaped that blaze with my life. But though I survive, I knew that scoundrel would make further attempts on my life. Therefore, I staged my death and abdicated the throne of my dear younger sister, Garan. But the building of that great tomb, and disguising yourself as a lowly servant, why would you do such a thing? Garan, I would have you explain. I wished for her to be close at hand. It was the only way I felt I could protect her, and it was the best way to hide her from the eyes of the public. After all, who could conceive of Amara lowering her station to that of a servant? She's got that right. Even Dirk thought Amara was being held captive in some far-off place. He never even guessed she was living as a servant right in plain sight. I must say, a life dedicated to the servitude of others is not the least bit disagreeable. 
It is a quiet, humble existence, far removed from the tedium of regal duties. Ah, but those days of peace have ended. And it's all because of you, Hornhead. You should consider yourself lucky if that's all this ends with. If there is something you wish to save, and say it. It doesn't matter who you are. You won't escape the crime you committed. The defense moves to indict you as Justice Minister Inga's real killer. This case just got crazy. What's this? You would accuse Queen Amara of homicide? A grand priestess of Koreanism? You can't do that! She's virtually a goddess in the eyes of her people! If you commit the crime, you better be ready to do the time. Be you a priest, saint, queen, or god. I've never met such an egalitarian person. Queen Amara, in your years disguised as Nana, you will have, would have learned about Minister Inga's disorder. So you knew you can dress in Dirk's clothes to forge a convincing Seat's vision. Isn't that right? <laughs> what a curious character you are. You would label me a murderer? Me? The one who the people regard as the reincarnation of the Holy Mother herself? You may be a grand figure in Koreanism, but as a foreigner? You're just another suspect to me. It would appear your words are not in jest. Am I to suffer the sullying of my good name with accusation of murder most foul? Please, Queen Amara, forgive his impudence. The lawyer knows not what he speaks. Fear not, good Magistry, for this is the sacred hall of justice. Though I am a Grand Priestess on this stand, I am but a witness like any other. I shall face his accusations with grace and benevolence. Your compassion overfloweth your mercifulness. Oh, young lawyer, in my benevolence, I must warn you that your assertion suffers from a tragic flaw. Huh? There's a flaw? Neuta. Yes, your mercifulness. Who was present in the tomb when the murder was discovered? Dirk Sadmati, Maya Fey, and the victim, Minister Inga. I see. That is a fatal flaw indeed. It appears Queen Amara couldn't possibly have gone to the tomb as Minister Inga. What? Why not? Do not keep the defense waiting, Neuta. Explain how wrong he truly is. Yes, your mercifulness. Her benevolence, Princess Rafa, saw Minister Inga enter the tomb at around 2.30 p.m. Yet you, the defense, claim the person she saw was the minister being channeled by Queen Amara. However, if her mercifulness has channeled him, sorry, and moved to the tomb, then once she was done channeling, Queen Amara would have reemerged and been left stuck in the tomb. Oh, yeah. Had she tried to exit before you all arrived. Princess Rafa, who had been looking down upon the courtyard, would have seen her. However, her benevolence saw nothing of a sort. Ugh. In conclusion, Queen Amara could not have left the tomb without being observed. And yet, was she there in the tomb when the murder was discovered, Defense? No. No, she wasn't. <laughs> now do you see? Your flimsy claim has been uprooted like a sapling in a flood. <laughs> ah! Well, that was entertaining, Prosecutor Sadmati. Assume the prosecution of this case and clear your mother's good name. You wish for me to take over? Yes. Prosecute your father to save your mother. <laughs> what a point in fate you bear, but bear it you must. Are you ready? Yes, your eminence. And there you have it, your majesty. 
I shall watch the rest of the proceedings from the sidelines. I relinquish complete control of the sacred hall to your authority once more. Why, thank you, your eminence. Now then, your mercifulness, your testimony, if you please. <laughs>